Welcome back, everyone. So we know what the future holds. Did you think there would be three expansion reveals? Because I, I kind of thought they would do something like that. I thought they would do some, like, Marvel-style presentation to just say, hey, we have, like, multiple years of things. Don't worry, there's going to be content. I didn't know they would go as so far as to say that we seemingly are getting a, like, Quelthalas expansion, and then also we're getting a Northrend expansion. Um, now, to get you up to speed, basically, they've announced three expansions in what they are calling the World Soul Saga. So, I, I mean, yeah, er everyone's doing a saga now, it just is the way that it is. Um, but what I think is potentially good there is a clear narrative through line actually having a direction between the three expansions. For me, the big question is, are we getting these every two years, or is this an every 18-month thing, or an every year thing? Uh, to be honest, if they can go faster, I think they absolutely will. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw these every 18 months, and then after the final expansion, which is called The Last Titan, that will be the start of whatever their next saga is. I've got to wonder if there's going to be a world revamp. Surely after The Last Titan is the time to do that. Thinking about them doing, like, Kel'Thalas and stuff in the second expansion, which is called Midnight, is kind of interesting to me because in terms of art assets, between that and then doing Northrend and The Last Titan, I mean, come on, you're going to have so many art assets that I think a world revamp is almost certainly going to happen. But anyway, the big picture here as we see in the cinematic, which, by the way, number one, we've got Jedi Survivor looking um, Anduin. Uh, I like this Anduin, actually. Um, it's a pity that that's obviously character development or, you know, he was locked inside his body while his body did heinous stuff. Um, it's a pity that happened through the Shadowlands, but certainly this portrayal of Anduin, uh, I like. I think it could have more, I think it could just have more depth and uh, intrigue than maybe some of the goody two-shoes Anduin that we got. So basically, they are hearing the world soul call out to them as expressed in these shots that totally do remind me of, like, the Oppenheimer trailer. So obviously, some stuff is going on with the world soul. As Matson teased, uh, ultimately, there is, I don't know if it's conspiracy, but there is, you know, more to know. Um, we've been speculating along these lines for ages. That's what we'll be doing over these next three expansions, culminating with the Titans returning in The Last Titan. Um, we go to, we go to um, Ulduar. That's where, like, a big event seemingly takes place. We go to Ulduar, maybe Azeroth wakes up, who knows, but at the very least, the Titans arrive. That's quite uh, significant then, because, of course, Eridicron, the thing that he said, um, you know, after, um, like, at the very end of that cinematic recently, was that his whole plan is to basically force the Titans to come so that he can absolutely wallop them, because he thinks he's a big badass. Now, that is a plan that he's doing along with Zalatath. Zalatath, who is going to be a main character in our first of the three expansions, which is World of Warcraft War Within, where she is, um, well, leading a bunch of Nerubians. So, the sword. Uh, what sword, exactly, we are going to be going underneath uh, the sword, which is kind of cool. Actually, in this, um, in this zone art, you can see um, yeah, you can see, like, the tip of the sword piercing down, and I guess that, like, yellow light is, I don't know, Azeroth, like, defense systems or something, who knows, but it looks pretty damn cool. And if you've been around WoW for as long as I have, you'll remember all the initial rumors and all the talk of there being a massive, um, like, Azul Nerub zone, like a really, really big Nerubian zone in Wrath of the Lich King. It was supposed to be like some massive big thing. Then, of course, it got cut down into those two dungeons. So, obviously, we're seeing that actually be realized, which I think is pretty cool. And to go into this expansion's features, I think uh, it's kind of interesting. Dragonflight wasn't really able to have big new features other than like, you know, dragon riding and stuff, because Dragonflight was obviously, fundamentally, getting, like, getting their shit together, right? Getting, like, that foundation built. So, it's now then, in this expansion, that we seemingly are actually seeing new features be added to the game, seemingly in a way that's rather evergreen. I think the first big one to talk about is the uh, the Delves. So, these are basically described as a new pillar of endgame, as in, these Delves will fill up your Great Vault. The way it's described here is uh, scalable world instances for one to five players, which provide meaningful gear progression that will contribute to a new reward track uh, in the Great Vault for world content players. So that basically is helping to solve a really, I mean, just a really big issue, right? Where the world content ends up feeling just like a bit pointless. The game then just totally ends up being like about raids and dungeons. So I think this gives them another really good opportunity to like get content in there. That that can be done solo, I think will be particularly interesting. Um, certainly I am very, I could very fondly um, remember say the horrific visions that came in with, uh, with patch 8.3. So I think actually when they start to experiment with their format, 
um, they, they can do cool things. I think Horrific Visions was like really proof that that can work. So if you're telling me we can get that, you can do it solo if you want. You can do it with just a few friends. Um, seemingly, it'll have a top end of difficulty enough to like actually have the Great Vault make sense. I mean, to me, that just seems like a, a good feature of the game, kind of like ticking a box that won't be massive for the MDI players or <laughs> not that there's that many of us in the MDI, but you know, the, like the high-end Mythic Clusters or whatever. This maybe won't target them as much, but I think for a lot of people who just want to like stress-free get home from work and like they, they want to play WoW, but they don't want to play something that's totally brain dead. This seems like an actual piece of design content they can play um, or even... You just want to goof around in your alts. So to me, that actually sounds really damn good. Our next big thing, massively account-wide. Uh, I know for a long time we've all talked about Star Wars, I suppose like Star Wars Galaxies, no. Uh, the Star Wars, the, the Old Republic, the MMO, right? They have this system called Legacies that basically ties all your characters together and it kind of gives you this like account-wide progression thing. Well, we've got Warbands. These are kind of interesting. Uh, they say players can enjoy alt-wide progression um, with all characters in the BNet account, regardless of faction. This includes... Renown, a warband bank, achievements, and more things. And on top of that, you'll be able to, in transmog, pick up any bit of gear and it will go into your collection, regardless of, like, you know, if your character's the right armor type or, like, any of that stuff. So, this is pretty big. Like, seriously, man, as an example, I've recently uh, swapped to a paladin and I wanted to do a bunch of content. And I'm enjoying my paladin. But, like, my priest is the one that has the old renowns and has, like, done the old campaign stuff. But the paladin feels like the character that I want to play now. And that ends up being, like, one of those really annoying little barriers that just makes you be like, ah, there's loads of other games. I'll just play something else. So I think this will kind of, like... Remove a lot of pain points. Uh, I think that's really wise. Then on top of that, these heroic towns. Man, these heroic towns actually seem really cool. Um, I don't know if they're like full like class skins or anything like that, but um, they certainly are allowing you to kind of lean into whatever class fantasy you want. So you can basically here see for the boomkin, you're seemingly able to choose, I guess, like a subspec for these like sort of mastery talents. Um, in this case, it's either Keeper of the Grove or Elune's Chosen. Each one of those then has got like its own path of talent. So that seems like a bunch of progression, but also when you look inside those, um, they've got all their little choice nodes and stuff like that. And I think this being built on top of the existing talent rework is really good. One of the things that we've really seen from that team is um, with this talent rework, they clearly have got the tools to actually iterate on classes. Um, I imagine whenever they just had like the big, you know, mop, uh, afterward talents, everything's very big. Whereas here, if they want to rebalance stuff, like they can reorder some talents. They can like change the points a bit, change the, to the choice node. That's all seemingly led to a lot of really good design work uh, in our current expansion. So with this, uh, yeah, just a really good way of, um, of leaning into that. As an example, you can go Dark Ranger uh, if you're a hunter. I think that's pretty exciting. Um, there's some really cool stuff for warriors as well. So uh, yeah, I think those, yeah, those talents, pretty sick. So in terms of our core features, right, we've got this new evolution of talents. We've got delves um, as a new, like, sort of endgame pillar of content. Take, like, the island expeditions. What was the thing that really messed up the islands? It was, like, the big Azerite uh, grind. With Torghast, it was having to do, you know, get, getting your, your soul ash and your soul cinders, and people didn't really like that. Um, whereas something like this, where it's just its own pillar of the game, where clearly, like, if you don't want the gear from that, or you just, you're not interested in it, that's fine. That's just the exact same as you not going anywhere near PvP, because you don't want to do PvP. Now, of course, one of the things they didn't talk about, but I think is highly, highly relevant, is um, rated uh, battlegrounds. Solo queue rated battlegrounds. There's a brawl that they're uh, doing right now, testing that. That, like, certainly means that solo queue RBGs will be a thing in this next expansion, which to me is really exciting. Um, honestly, it's like, sometimes you really want to play that, like, proper sweaty game mode, which is really what Arena is, and that's, like, not the type of PvP for everybody. Some of us really love objective-based games. Um, so that will mean that making, say, Battlegrounds will finally make sense for them as a team, because those Battlegrounds will actually be, like, leading to, like, I don't know, like, a proper reward system, like, it'll actually fit with the game, so I completely anticipate that'll be happening with uh, with War Within as well. Then, for other things, uh, Kalthalas, uh, I've got to assume that also means Lordaeron for the expansion after uh, after this one, which is called Midnight. Um, 
Okay, Midnight, I, I think it's a really cool name for an expansion. Uh, Sunwell stuff, got to imagine. And the amount of, like, plot potential that there is in Lordaeron. I mean, come on, you guys know we've done so many videos on that stuff. So, that's exciting to me. And as for our final one, uh, just my notes here say, Return to Northrend, Titans return at Uldu, our vast conspiracy, learn the true nature of Azeroth. My, uh, my thought... Uh, for the last while has been that Azeroth isn't a Titan. Um, Azeroth can, like, turn into a Titan if the Titans come and claim her, in the same way that, you know, Void wanted to claim uh, Azeroth. That's why we had the Old God stuff. Um, and that's why, you know, Sargaris and Legion wanted to destroy the world, because they didn't want the Old Gods to, uh, to, to get Azeroth. So I don't think it's like, you know, an Old God gets to Azeroth and Azeroth wakes up as a Void Titan. No, I think that just, like, turns Azeroth into some insane, crazy, voidy beast. And I guess when you look at Azeroth... What do you see? You see she's, like, infused with all of these, you know, order magics and stuff. So it's like, clearly, is that her naturally? Or is that just the stuff that, uh, you know, all those Titan installations? Is that just what those have been doing? Which I've got to assume it kind of is. Um, so overall, I know for a bunch of people, if it feels like it's more crazy cosmic stuff, that could be rough. And I totally get that. In this case, I feel like this is a good way of keeping it in Azeroth. I think, like, I mean, come on, guys, the massive thing here... We've got two of these expansions that are not taking us to a new, you know, bit of the map that they've discovered. They're taking us to Kalthalas, so I guess like Upper Eastern Kingdoms, and they're taking us to Northrend. They've never really done that. Like, yes, we went back to Draenor for Warlords of Draenor. I guess maybe this that's the kind of scope they'll go with. It's kind of hard to say, but honestly, it's pretty damn exciting. Um, then the idea that, you know, based off what they do with like Northrend and Kalthalas, you could probably just spin that into a world revamp. Yeah, that that's like kind of interesting. So... If this Titan stuff, uh, you know, if this ended up being, like, we're, you know, going to some, like, random planet, meeting a whole bunch of new people, or we're going into the plane of the void, into Zarathumbra, I mean, obviously, I think players would just groan and not really be down for that kind of thing. But if we're going to be, like, dealing with all this stuff, which, like, you know, Titans, old gods, we've had that in WoW for a very, very long time, but if that's going to be dealt with in a more, like, boots-in-the-ground way... Um, which, I mean, certainly is the vibe that you get with um, that really damn good opening cinematic. Um, yeah, it's actually got me feeling pretty damn positive. Mostly just, like, based on the back of the really strong track record of delivery. Like, you guys know I, I have criticisms of some of the plot delivery. Um, and things have been, like, a little bit bumpy as they've adjusted to this, like, pretty damn, uh, like, brutal pace. Um, but overall, I think, like, these themes are, are good. Like, these places you know, can be fun to go to. Looking at the new zones... I think they look awesome. Looking at, like, the, the concept art for the Nerubians, um, I mean, come on, like, man, thinking about Warcraft 3, thinking about Wrath of the Lich King, um, thinking about Anchorage, of course, that's all, yeah, pretty damn great. And then, I suppose, the other thing, um, which you'll notice in the new... By the way, look at the key art. The key art is really cool, like uh, Illyria and Anduin. Um, so, Illyria, she's kind of interesting. Uh, whenever we kill Nazoth, they put a voice line in, where um, I think Turalyon was like, have the voices shut up in your head yet? She's like, oh no, new voices have joined their chorus. That's the thing, all these characters have seemingly, these, these characters who have been very like deeply connected to Azeroth in some way, they're getting all these visions. It's interesting then that for Illyria, those are rather different visions. Um, now a lot of that plot line with like her, Locust Walker, that was really fun stuff back in Legion. Yeah, like narratively, I think they can probably pull this off. They certainly have the characters to do the job. And if they're going to be going through this in a way that is just more sort of boots in the ground, like properly celebrating Azeroth and like knowing that this is Warcraft, it's mostly set in Azeroth, that's the thing that we do. Um, and the way that they've been able to do that by clearly not just inventing a random new island that we don't really know about. It's a big MMO. It's a world we've all been in. Yes, going to a new place is cool, but for so many of us at this stage, like, going back to Northrend is, like, infinitely more exciting, right? So, yeah, there we go. That's my initial impressions. Uh, obviously, we'll have to see. Like, I'll, I'll try to get my hands on with things. Um, I've got an interview with some developers tomorrow because I'm, I'm at BlizzCon right now, which is why I'm in this uh, lovely beige box. <laughs> um, I'll probably see loads of you there as well. So uh, that's what's going on. We've got three World of Warcraft expansions. That's kind of crazy. Over in Classic Land, they've got... Uh, they, they're actually doing Cataclysm. But this season of Discovery, to me, that actually sounds like a, a neat way of doing, like, almost a trial run of Classic Plus. Like, come on, getting, like, Black Fathom Deeps as a raid? Yeah, that's a cool idea. So, yeah, I, I hope it does well. Okay. That's it for me. I've got a con to go to. Uh, thanks for all your support, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.